Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My friends, this is our Pro Popolo Mass. The intentions are those for our uh, prayers, for our, our needs, for the Mass, if you will, of all the people of our parish, and all the prayers others have asked us to bring on their behalf to this altar of sacrifice. This week, this 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time, and this 4th of July weekend, uh, the Lord promises to those who are His lowly ones, those who trust Him, an ability to enter into His rest, to enter into His peace. Not an easy thing in our world, not an easy thing in life, but nonetheless for those who trust in the Lord, certainly He gives us the grace to do that. And so, my friends, let us turn to our own lowliness, or let us at least re reflect on how lowly we have been, and so acknowledge our sin in order to prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. Riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. 
He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Every day, uh, religious and priests, your parish priests, pray uh, the Divine Office. The Liturgy of the Hours is a series of times during the day when we have prayers around the Psalms. It's one way the church keeps the Lord's uh, command to pray always. So every day we have evening prayer. In every evening prayer we say the Magnificat. You may be familiar with this. It's the canticle that the Blessed Virgin Mary exclaims, or maybe even sings, when she visits her cousin Elizabeth after the Annunciation. So, you know, we have the Annunciation, the angel Gabriel uh, spoke of how the Holy Spirit would overshadow the Blessed Mother and she would conceive the Lord. Um, and then she makes haste, and she, we have the Visitation, where she meets her cousin Elizabeth. And she begins by saying, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. You may have heard the terms, my soul magnifies the greatness of the Lord. That's where the word magnificat comes from. And she begins to sing, if you will, of the great things God has done for her uh, because she is the handmaiden of the Lord. She is the lowly servant who has been lifted and exalted. In her magnificat, the Blessed Mother says, he has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast out the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. Now, the meaning of the Magnificat is primarily spiritual. The rewards for those who fear the Lord, the rewards to the lowly, and hopefully we're the ones who are always looking to be more lowly, because we want to be the lowly and humble ones of the Lord. Still, in, in past times, I occasionally would ponder if in the grand scheme of things, when you compare, if you will, the Blessed Mother's historical circumstance to our own, I sometimes wonder, well, wait a second, Maybe I'm the mighty one. Maybe I'm the proud one. Maybe I'm the rich one in an earthly sense because of the so many great blessings we receive in our nation. We should be thankful when we can give thanks during the 4th of July. And so our church, as we all know, in the last century or so, has always, well, the church has always addressed the issues of the poor and helping the poor. But in the last century, so we've really more focused on sort of economically and structurally, uh, how can we alleviate these things? So I kind of, you know, always kind of wondered about myself in that circumstance. That's good food for thought on, on how we look at, uh, you know, how we structure society and how we care for the poor. And so as I said, I would often wonder, am I the mighty one? Am I the proud one? Am I the rich one in the eyes of God, not seeing those poor ones? Until very recently, actually, I was praying the Magnificat, and something hit me in a very new way. Recently, like many of us, I've been feeling very anxious about what we see in the news, and in particular, the violence and chaos that is ongoing. 
And in my previous homilies, uh, I've spoken of certain groups, uh, people who are agitators, who are openly Marxist, openly revolutionary, even openly opposed to the family, to the faith. And so these people, the agitators and the violent ones, they're not really the poor and the lowly. They are proud with intellectual conceit. They are rich because they are well financed by wealthy donors. And they are mighty when you think of how they are unopposed in their actions in public. And to be quite honest, uh, what causes me anxiety, like many of you perhaps, is, you know, from even from our church leaders, you know. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. And that was the new light. Feeling like things are becoming more irrational. As what little in our society that is Christian, like the family is specific, as we think of mom, dad, children, that's a specifically Christian or biblical understanding of the family. That's openly being attacked because of its Christian roots. And uh, we become more and more, at least I have become more and more, that my voice means very little in society. Our beliefs, when you think of it, are mocked in universities. A friend of mine had to resign from his position as a chaplain, uh, unjustly, by the way. Uh, a court can make a decision and wipe away many of the things that we believe or we've understood to be in society. And it causes me to realize that all of us are pretty lonely in this world. Our voices are pretty small. We have uh, we don't have a lot of influence or power. Today's gospel evokes all of this. The Lord praises the Father for revealing the mysteries of God to little ones, to the lowly, the humble, those who trust in God, as we know the Blessed Virgin Mary. And hopefully, if we're watching this, if we're, we're trying to pray, that includes us, because that's all we've got to trust in is the Lord. You know, in this passage from Matthew, right prior to it, in this gospel passage, right prior to it, the Lord is declaring woes to the prominent cities in the area of Galilee. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. Woe to you, Capernaum, for not having received the gospel and the mighty deeds the Lord did were right before them. And he speaks of the wise and the learned. When he speaks of this, he's speaking of the proud. He's speaking of those who are full of this world, so full of what this world has to offer that they can't hear or make room for Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to talk about what is revealed. And that word revealed is something that is shown, revealed as in like the apocalypse, something that was hidden, that is now revealed, but it is only revealed to the lowly ones, those who trust in God. And what is the ultimate thing that is being revealed? God himself, the Trinity. That's why the Lord speaks of only the Father knows the Son, and only the Son knows the Father. He's speaking of the Trinity. Little ones, humble ones, people who are humble enough to realize Jesus is just not another intellectual. He's not just another prophet. He's not even meant to be a worldly king. He is God. And when the Lord is God, and when you know who God is, that's where you place your trust. And that's what stuck with me in this realization of the Magnificat. When it gave an answer to our lowliness, it gives an answer to, if you will, our anxiety. Once you realize why we are the lowly, why we are the voiceless, she is the servant and handmaiden of the Lord. She, who is elevated because of her lowliness, speaks for us. And she is the greatest of us. So even if we don't have much of a voice, she shows that God has a plan. And she has a role in that plan. Obviously, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the greatest role of any creature, any of us. And so uh, the great gift of her explaining that is that that applies to us. And that God does not abandon us. But he has a plan that unfolds even if we can't see it. It's our trust that allows us to see it. Today's gospel, the Lord not only speaks of hidden things and the proud and the, uh, and the uh, lowly, but he speaks of this word, the yoke, 
the yoke, like an ox carrying a yoke. He is referring to primarily, as one in one sense, but primarily discipleship. That when you enter into discipleship, you carry a yoke. And we hear that his yoke is easy. What does that mean when he says easy? Well, one of the ways that that can be interpreted is it's well-fitting. When they would make yokes for oxen back then, or maybe even a yoke for somebody to carry water, uh, a good carpenter, like Jesus, of course, or St. Joseph, would make it hand custom made. It would be fitted to you, it would be well fitted. And that's what makes it easy. It allows us to realize that if this yoke that we're talking about spiritually is our discipleship in Christ, that Christ has made our discipleship custom made for us. We all are individuals. We all uh, come to the Lord in a different way, if you will. We all grow, come from wherever we are going to wherever we are, where we are going in our spiritualities, in our circumstance, if you will, in our vocations. These days, there is a saint who had a great vocation. His name was Junipero Serra. You have heard about him because a couple of weeks back, or just very recently, his statues in California were torn down. Who was he? He was a missionary. He is this classic Franciscan mission, missionary who left, really, a life of education and teaching. And uh, in his vocation, you think of the freedom and the courage these people had, left Spain and came to the mission territories of America on the West Coast, Mexico all the way to California, and founded all those missions like that have all those same names, like San Francisco and San Diego and Los Angeles. He was one of those, and he founded many of them, all up and down California and Mexico coast. And so his, uh, his memory is being torn down because of the explicit Christian roots of our culture, our society. Obviously, our culture, as I said before, our, our government is secular. That's part of the experiment that they're having. But our roots, our thoughts, our values, how we relate is Christian. The proud ones who tear down his statues are either knowingly lying about who Junipero Serra was or are ignorant of who he was, which makes their pride and their conceit all the more ironic. I was gratified to see, as you may have seen, Archbishop Cordelione went to the site where one of the statues of St. Junipero Serra was uh, torn down and addressed in spiritual terms and in public terms uh, our outrage at this and the prayers of protection that need to occur against this kind of evil. And this is what it is. It's atheistic evil. In a sense, if it wasn't for uh, the news about those statues, I would have forgotten uh, that Junipero Serra's saint day in America is July 1st which is so close to July 4th. It's, it's so perfect how, how it reminds us that the founding of our nation, uh, great missionaries, great people of vocation, the lowly of God who with courage went wherever he called, founded our nation. He was not well known in his own time, but what he did because of God's plan became great, much like the Blessed Virgin Mary, who was the lowliest of her time and was the greatest of all creation. This 4th of July, let us ponder the Christian roots of our freedom and liberty of our society. Let us cherish it that much more. Let us pray for it to be preserved and that the Lord shows us the way that we can help participate in that. And let us also pray to enter into the rest that the Lord promises to his holy ones today in the gospel. That rest is obviously, there is a rest at the end when we hopefully die and go to heaven, but it also means rest in this life, in inner peace. Let us pray that we have, if you will, the, uh, the courage and the peace of somebody like Jennifer Osera, who worked tirelessly for the Lord. Let us pray for the, for the joy that the Blessed Mother has in speaking of the Magnificat, of trusting in the Lord. And let us pray that we ourselves, in following their example and praying for the grace of God and following his promptings, that we will have inner peace in the work he has set us out to do on his behalf.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. With confidence, we now pray that the church may ever more perfectly display the truth of God's love and the gospel of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, be our prayer. For government leaders throughout the world, that they pursue justice, peace, and the true good of the human person made in the image and likeness of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, be our prayer. We pray for our nation as we celebrate this 4th of July, our independence, we pray that we will appreciate the liberty and use well the freedoms we have been given and that we will understand uh, the justice of our society based on Christian roots. And in a special way, we pray for those who fought to preserve and those who are there to protect the freedoms we have been given. We pray to the Lord. Lord, be our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life and for the married life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, be our prayer. Those burdened by poverty, hardship, oppression, and persecution, that God will rescue them and lift them up, we pray to the Lord. Lord, be our prayer. For the grace this week to turn to our Lord in moments of weakness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, be our prayer. Almighty Father, we offer you these and all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. All the prayers others have asked us to offer on their behalf at this altar of sacrifice. We pray for all the faithful departed. May they glory in your company. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. 
May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, to whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the past mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, but this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. salvation of all the world. 
Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope and Sean our Bishop, Robert our Auxiliary, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind invitations to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished with such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I hope you have a good Fourth of July weekend, uh, one that allows us to celebrate uh, our nation's liberty, our independence, the things that we receive from our country, uh, and also to appreciate our families more and more as the summer opens up. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls.